Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the North Juanita. We're glad to have you with us on our show this evening. We're especially glad for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in the cities in our area. If you haven't watched us before, each week we have someone on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area, uh, city council people, mayors, sometimes uh, city staff, to bring you information about what's currently happening and what's going to be happening in that city. And then we do encourage you that if any of the issues resonate with you, they're important to you, then be sure to be in, con in contact with your mayors and city council people because that helps them know what to, you're thinking and they can bring that into the whole picture and process of uh, governing the city. So we're glad to have you with us and tonight we're very happy to welcome as a guest Dr. Mark Schultz Thank you. who is on the Osseo City Council. Thank you. We're glad to have you back with us again. Oh, it's, always, it's always a pleasure being here with you. And then I asked you to think to introduce yourself to our wider audience. Sure. The people in Osseo, I bet, know you pretty well. <laughs> but some in the other cities might not. So if you just give them a little background. Sure. Um, well, I'm Dr. Mark Schultz. Um, I was elected in 2009. So mm -hmm. I'm currently in my 10th year in the city council. Ah. Um, I, of course, live in Osseo. And then I actually am a chiropractor by trade. And I own a business um, about four blocks from my home. Ah. Um, I've sat on every major subcommittee currently. Um, I'm on the Economic Development Authority, uh -huh. um, as well as I am one of the longstanding members on our risk management, uh -huh. um, and then our uh, HR subcommittee as well. So the two uh, major subcommittees that work hand in hand with our state administrator oh, to yes. make sure that they're getting very direct feedback regarding the directions of the council, as opposed to a lot of other cities that are just pretty autonomous in that respect. That right. That's just not the relationship that we've mm -hmm. developed with our city administrator, and it works out really well. Yeah, you do what works, right? Right, exactly. We'll start out with something you referred to, road construction mm -hmm. and utilities. And all of our cities do some road construction. They have different kinds of plans for how to get it done. So I thought we'll fill in the people in Osseo sure. what's happening on your roads. Maybe you can tell us about how is your pavement management plan set up? So, you know, it's kind of, I like to explain a historical perspective, especially since we're talking like to the Osseo people. Oh, right. Um, when I was on the council 10 years ago, when I um, took over, we had $30,000 in our uh -huh. street fund. Right. Okay, which would hardly cover <laughs> a reasonable amount of any sidewalk. Right. So we uh, really did a lot of budget restructuring and um, did a lot of different things and, and came up with, with a payment management plan, a lot, of, a lot of different things, capital management plan, whatever. But yeah. as, it, as it is now, um, we've stepped ahead now. I think it, we are really close. We must have 80% in the oh, last 10 years of our city, all of our streets have been resurfaced. That's very good. Um, we're now starting to come back to some of the different things. We're having some issues with um, some failures of like our Central Avenue project that happened mm -hmm. way back in 2008. We're having some pavement failures there wow. and paver failures. We're dealing with that. But we sit down, we kind of laid out this map for we can spend about this much money every year. We're right. not going to go out and bond for $10 million right. and just right. totally cripple our community. Yeah. Um, so we had this big plan we put together about six, seven years ago, and then we just start working the plan. Uh -huh. When everything is done and resurfaced and, and taken care of, then we'll go back and revisit um, different things. We hired new city engineers, I'm thinking it was about two or three years ago, ah. um, that are coming at it with a totally different perspective. Oh, um, that's good. And in doing so, um, compared to where our last city engineers, we're saving a significant sum of money. Oh, that's even more important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we just, we want to try to have respect for the hard-earned money that our citizens uh -huh. um, have and you know and it's always difficult for me to do taxation whatever else but we're trying to do and be respectful as much as possible right um, one of the things we also did several years ago is um, we wanted to get sidewalks on every block but uh -huh. what we do is we'll only do sidewalks on one side of the street we oh, won't do oh, sidewalks sure. on both sides sure. unless it's a major thoroughfare major yeah. walking path so um, that's that's kind of how we're approaching it. I think next year will probably be one of our last big years um, 
for street projects, but then we have alley projects. Uh -huh. um, and those are the only really, the major ones are the assessed ones. After that, we're in maintenance mode. So uh -huh. that's where our savings over these 10 years are coming to play, and, and we won't have to assess for that. Yeah, because the cities that of a certain age have alleys. Mm -hmm. Then you get forward in years, and then the alleys go their way, right? <laughs> yeah, and we used to have, um, our assessment policy on alleys used to be 100% to the property owners, because uh -huh. very few people went down there. Well, they were talking about different things, and so the compromise that we came up was that the city, secondary to garbage and different issues, we will cover 20% of the alley, oh. and then the residents are still responsible right. for their 80%, but, and this project, <coughs> um, you add on to some alleys that have been done, so people are, you know, paying some sizable assessments, but it's really making um, any increase in their property right. and their accessibility, and they just really like it when it's done. Oh, definitely. That how roads look affect the way people look at your community, mm -hmm. your perceptions of your community. But when a project is done with roads, people are happy. <laughs> um, you have to, you go it it takes them a couple and, months. Right. It takes them a couple months, maybe through the winter, yeah. um, before they um, really look at it. I mean, when we redid our street, it was my assessment was about seven, seven, eight thousand uh -huh. dollars. Um, and uh, I think of the assessments that we've done, ours is probably the highest. Uh -huh. And so, um, yeah, it just, you never, unfortunately, people don't plan for streets to be repaired. Right, right. And the ones that really, unfortunately, plan the least is the people on corner lots. And so oh, where and you have got, to. Right. <laughs> exactly. So you have to do different things. And this street plan, we had an issue with, we really don't have is we have a lot of um, uh, row type townhouses. Oh, and so okay. we had to come up with something that settled in the middle for them some uh -huh. an idea where they kind of felt because their houses were narrow but right. when you look at some of them had two three cars and there's yeah. other people with large right. lots had two three cars it right. wasn't really a major usable difference and so it was it was a it was a challenge and a struggle and, and uh you know i think we came up with something um that was that was acceptable as a compromise now, in terms of people in other cities too, because I think this is an important part of the process, is how do people find out about what's going to happen or what is happening if they're in the construction area? So, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you will always receive notices mm -hmm. in the construction areas. And so the big important thing is when a, a letter comes from the city, don't just throw it in the uh -huh. pile with everything else. <laughs> right, right. Um, we've actually had to adopt a strategy on sometimes where we've had to change the color of paper to get people's uh -huh. attention, uh -huh. um, different things like that. Um, a lot of times people say, well, I didn't see anything. Right. <laughs> so been, you'll be invited to open houses, uh -huh. um, ask to, for your input. Um, lots of letters from the city. Right. Then there's going to be invitations to the different hearings, mm -hmm. assessment hearings and project right. hearings and that kind of thing. Um, so it's <clears throat> hard to miss. But every once in a while, people are very surprised when all of a sudden their street or their yeah. sidewalk is getting torn <laughs> right, up. Right, right. Um, and so it's, that's the most difficult thing um, being in a city leadership position is, is consistent communication because everybody oh, communicates yes. so differently. Right, and, right. you know, some people won't open mail because they're text messaging folks nowadays or email right. is even obsolete right. now for many of the younger folks and so really trying to do that I mean I had a snapchat dialogue with one of my constituents not too long ago on a city issue and that's uh -huh. just how people prefer to right. communicate right. so you have to stick up with it yeah you have to find different find ways people will get the information right. you want them to have exactly right and then to keep encouraging them like we are to keep up to date on things exactly because it makes your life easier now, there's two kinds of things that need to be done. Either you do just the top surface or you dig everything down mm -hmm. and start everything back. Maybe you can tell about those two processes and what they're called because right. people aren't necessarily <clears throat> familiar with the names. So you know, the most common ones that you're going to have, and in, in some engineering firms use little different terminologies. Right. Um, but what we're going to do is either going to be like a mill and overlay. Right. Um, where you just have a big grinder machine, goes, cuts off two, three inches, uh -huh. and then recycles that, puts it back down again. So that helps with that drive surface. Right. Um, you might have a reclamation where, <clears throat> where the, excuse me, the entire street surface, right. same type of a process goes through. Um, and then often you'll have um, reconstruction um, where you have to get down to the utilities and right. the things that are down right. there. Um, as we found out um, through these street projects, um, our public works directors hadn't set up in a 
a valve exercise program, mm. which sounds kind of fun and exciting, but all <laughs> it is is opening and closing water valves. Ah. And if you don't do that, yeah. they don't close when you want them to ah. without significant help. Sure. So um, that's one of the things that we're running into now. We visualize all of our lines um, and our underground utilities to try to, to try to get that in there. This last project, we had a water main that was consistently freezing because when oh, it was installed, right. it was... It was installed um, about two to three feet underneath the surface, which is just not, just not deep enough. enough. Right. Right. And so um, we've took a lot of that kind of stuff as well. And um, and uh, so that's really, I mean, the, the major differences. And then, you know, when you start ripping out streets, you have to deal with curbs. Oh, right, and then right. again, there's a lot of areas of us that don't have any sidewalks. Right. So yeah. we're trying to figure out what the best route is for that. Yeah. We got creative on, uh, on this last street project for sure. And... What streets are you covering this year, or what streets are getting worked on? So in your almost last year of your pro, of your twenty year plan, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah it's it's or well, ten year plan. Right, it's a new it's a new plan type thing that doesn't really have a lot of bearing on what's going uh -huh. on per se for the way that we run oh, things. Okay. But um, our big areas this year are over by Sipes Park, so uh -huh. kind of in the southeast right. southeast corner of the city. Um, over by St. Paul's Lutheran Church. That's a big project uh -huh. right there. Um, additionally, over um, in kind of the northwest corner of town, there's several streets that are, that are being done. Over in the southeast corner of town, um, we had a lot of utility work and uh -huh. it was a major reconstruction oh, and yeah. it was actually a street realignment because the least impacting way for us to put a sidewalk in was to go on one side of the street, well, the property owner on one side of the street really didn't want it, so they ah. actually gave us property uh -huh. to move the street over uh -oh. <laughs> so they didn't have to deal with, with uh -huh. um, the sidewalk on their side. Right. It's an it's a, it's a older um, church that just really didn't, didn't feel that they had the resources uh -huh. to maintain it. Right. Um, and so it was, a good, it was a good opportunity where we could go in and come up with a compromise. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was um, a little tenuous there for a bit, but we finally came up with a compromise that worked for everybody. Now, and it, it's an important goal for all of the cities is keeping the appearance of, of your city up and keeping the value of your property up. Yeah, it's, it's always difficult because when you're assessing folks and you're moving things, <clears throat> it's really important to them. Right. And it's the most important thing on their mind. But mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of everything else in the city, um, I, I, I don't want to say it's not important, right. but it's not as important there. and. You know, we have the benefit, me now, of going through, you know, nine or ten of these different oh, projects. Yes, right. And understanding the impacts and different mm -hmm. things like that. And there's things about... Okay, our next area mm -hmm. is uh, your fire department mm -hmm. needs more members. And I thought we'd start talking <coughs> about how is your fire department organized? Sure. So ours is, uh, we have a paid on call fire department. Mm -hmm. um, we're very, very lucky. Our fire relief association, which is a separate entity from our fire department, uh, which is the fundraising entity uh -huh. and helps us with our with the pension requirements. Uh -huh. um, they are very active in Osseo. If they weren't active in Osseo, it would be very challenging for uh -huh. us to have our fire department the way that it is. But currently we have a chief. He's uh, been on the job for less than a year. Uh -huh. um, comes from a long line of firefighters and uh -huh. chiefs. Uh, Mike Fino. Um, uh, it was a great move for us. I, I think Mike's going to do a great job now and far into the future. Then he has a, an assistant chief. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, they have officers that are responsible for different right. aspects of fire operations, and then you have, then you have the paid on call firefighters uh -huh. there. So it's a it's a very similar management structure to law enforcement, and then loosely based off military right. type stuff. Right. And so, about how many people are in your fire department? I don't want an accurate <coughs> no, number. No, 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 that's roughly. fine. Um, I. <laughs> I normally our full contingency is about 28. I think okay. right now we've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 people uh -huh. with people's life situations changing oh, right, and you right. know sometimes it's, it's a matter of having kids and not being able to have that flexibility uh -huh. or job transfers different things like that and like everybody else you know our most difficult time is during the day right you know when people are leaving our community and coming back but we're still pretty lucky we've got old we've got uh, former fire chiefs that own businesses in the city that are, are uh, still very active in our department. Oh, and that would be a good help. Yes, it, it, and that's that's always the area that we like to try to fill into is trying to trying to locate people that right. are maybe second or third shifters that mm -hmm. have that time during the day. That's that's very helpful for us. Yeah, that definitely is part of the challenge, right? right. 
and and some bigger, bigger cities are going to all paid fire departments, but there's a whole challenge there too. Right? Well, you know, indeed, it, it's it's always that balance of safety and finances, right? And um, you know, many of the departments around our area have excellent working relationships with each other. Oh, right, um, right. So you can do that, and so that's benefit to us. Um, other ones have just a couple of paid people and, you know, all the different right. things. And so it's, it really is, that decision is really made on what people feel is important for their community. Oh, but right. it's very costly. Oh, right. Very, very costly. Right. But, you know, that's one of the areas that's very difficult to make a mistake when you're reinvesting in your community is people's safety. Right. That's important. And then what, what kind of requirements do... Does the being a fireman in your city require people apply? Sure. I mean, it's always we're always lucky if we have somebody that's transferring from another department. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but um, there's no previous experience that's necessary. Okay. I know there's a certain age at which they kind of cut folks off, um, but um, all the training was going to be provided that you're going to need. Mm -hmm. Um, and the big thing is a willingness to serve your community. Right. Um, and we have a lot of people from around the area too, not just Osseo people uh -huh. that are on our fire department. People that come in because of our community and just their love and their passion. Maybe they grew oh, up there, sure. moved away, or you know our officers do a really good job c recruiting. Uh -huh. And, and uh, you know we've got some great recruiting tools that we use to help recruit new new firefighters and things like that. So. And so then they, uh, they're going to have a, s a certain amount of training before they're ready to go. Maybe you could speak to that. Um, I, I'm not super well versed in that. I know, um, you know, we had the course that they call our firefighter one, okay. firefighter two, and then in there um, is first responder training. Uh -huh. And uh, depending upon where they're at in the training process, they um, are not allowed to participate right. on actual fires. So they're allowed to do stuff like uh, pulling hose and uh -huh. different things like that, clean up, that kind of thing. Right. But until they're fully fire, until, until they're fully trained, they're not allowed to, right. to enter a fire and different things like that. So, and then there's constant training that goes on from right. that. Um, you know, one of my biggest concerns, of course, is not getting enough. It, it sounds kind of sounds kind of hard to say this, but not getting enough reps. So, ah. you know, if you're not battling enough fires, right. you know, how right. do you stay yeah. stay stay uh, fresh on your skills and well, we never want to hide a fire. We had a big house fire this year, um, a couple months back. Um, but we just really, with our agreements with other departments and when the big oh, things right, happen, right. we're very lucky to have some great partnerships. Okay, and there's a program that's been in several cities where there's a cooperation between the city and a group to help people that are trying to start businesses. Anywhere in the process, mm -hmm. from the very beginning idea to uh, maybe the funding or something as sure. you go along. And you have the Open to Business Program. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the program. Yeah, it's a, it's a partnership where there's public and private um, uh -huh. funds that are in there. I mean, Asia doesn't have a lot of public funds in there. There's a lot of private funds. Um, and basically what it is, it revolves around a business consultant, uh -huh. somebody that's been down this road several times um, that can access uh, like, how do you ask for an SBA loan? Right. What's a business plan? I mean, why those documents are important. Right, right. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, I really want to work for myself. Um, I do it. It's not bad most uh -huh. days. Um, right. But, uh, but uh, it really gives this consultant the opportunity to get in there and work with them, answer questions, oh, put them right. onto these, these different loan programs, work with them in many cases on credit restoration. Uh -huh. Because people in the open businesses think they're just going to go out and borrow a bunch of <laughs> money on the business ah. and doesn't require good personal credit. And right. it does. Yeah. Because um, they're always guaranteeing it to somebody. Yeah. Um, so that was a program we started off a couple months ago. Um, okay. I don't know how well it's been utilized uh -huh. yet. Um, we heard a... Um, we heard a presentation by the consultant, uh -huh. and um, it was one of those things that we decided it would be a good resource, and we just hope that people are are going to access and utilize it. Yeah, that's why I thought we should stress it a little bit, mm -hmm. because I know some of the other cities have it, and we've uh, talked about some of the different projects that people have gotten help yep. on, and sometimes it really is a matter of someone showing you the guide way or the guidelines of help you get to where you want to be. You have the desire, but maybe not the knowledge. Well, and they help you build the roadmap. I mean, right. you can't, if I tell you to drive from here to Milwaukee and uh -huh. you've never been there, you don't know how to get to there. Right. Um, and so this just really helps lay out, here's the mm -hmm. different steps you need to go through. Right. You can talk to me about this. These are the different types of things. Here are the permits. I mean, 
people don't know you have right. to have a, a permit right. to put up a sign. Right. A permanent sign or a temporary <laughs> sign. It can't be whatever you want. You right. have to do the different steps because nothing's worse than going out and spending a couple thousand dollars on a sign and being told that doesn't work here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, it's really, I, I think it can be a really great program yeah. if utilized. It's difficult for people to know about these kinds of things. Yeah, it needs more knowledge out there for yeah. those of you out there that are thinking about it. Certainly, it's 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 really an opportunity for folks to, <clears throat> what really you have to do is if you're looking at setting up a business, talk to your city people. Oh, definitely. Call your city definitely. hall. There's tons and tons of resources that are available definitely. to people just by calling the city hall. So if, if I can give you one, one message about any of these types of things, just call city hall. Talk to somebody and say, I'm interested in opening a business here. Yeah. How can you help me? Right. And that's what we're set up for because businesses help all of us. It oh, gives us goods and services. Right, and right. The right businesses really help bring up the city and do great things. And there's more stress on entrepreneurship over the last five years or so. And so that the city can help. And then we'll put up uh, Rob Smolin and his phone number. Perfect. Because so, they can make an appointment with him because Absolutely. you have the relationship with his organization. Great, great. Yeah, I, I encourage people to take a look at that and give him a shout. And even if it's just a couple questions here or there, Rob doesn't right. mind talking with you. Yeah, and, and you can meet with him more than once. Mm -hmm. Meet and get some information put that together, deal with all the issues, and then come back again and check. He'll get you pointed in the right, right. direction, right. and he'll uh, he'll be your accountability partner to some right. points, and as long as he gets you pointed, if you run with it, uh, it's a possibility. Right. So that's for all the entrepreneurs out in Osseo, and in some of our other cities, We're happy too. to take entrepreneurs from other people as well. <laughs> you can come on in right. anyways. You can put a business here in Osseo. We're, right. we're still some of the least expensive commercial property um, from a leasing opportunity around this area. So. Now, the 2020 census is getting underway because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work before they get all the piece, parts and pieces together. Maybe you can explain what's involved in preparing for the census from the city standpoint. Sure. I have to admit I relied heavily on my city staff for this one. It's just oh, not I'm one of sure. the things that I've, I've looked at. But... <clears throat> um, Census information is very important because it's used mm -hmm. across the country, across the state, um, in getting that information so the decision makers can figure out how to appropriately support right. communities, uh, making sure we're hitting our different things and funding for schools, mm -hmm. hospitals, and, and those different types of things. Um, it's really primarily a function of the federal government. Right. Um, they will look out often um, and recruit people to do census, taking in different things like that. A lot of communities are you know, doing different types of things, stand up and be counted. Right. Because again, if there's more people, they're looking to um, reallocate some of the funds oh, that leave right. their community to get it back. Right. Um, and so it's really a lot of different things. I know there's a lot of posturing um, at the federal level between questions and this, that, oh, and other kinds right. of things that be on there. Right. So it, yeah, it's really a huge thing for them. And I know there's lots of opportunities for people that um, are not too ashamed to knock on people's doors. Right. Yeah, lots of job opportunities for mm -hmm. uh, a limited amount of time, but right, it's a good, it's a good temporary gig. Right, very good, and and it provides a service to your local community because you want everybody to get counted. Exactly, don't want to leave anybody out. And, it, and it's really important too, you know, for the counting, it helps set up our legislative districts and different things like that, to, mm -hmm. and people move around, right. and, and so that's a really important thing they use to redraw lines and for oh, representatives very and different important. things. And then businesses use it in deciding where to locate too, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You know, it, it's it's only as good as the data that people provide. Right. Um, right. You know, some people are like, I don't want to give this kind of information, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but, and I appreciate that respect for privacy, but that census data is very widely available. Right. Um, I use it all the time mm -hmm. to look at different things. And it kind of helps you understand how to steer your city. You know, if you oh, are finding right, that right. you're... Senior population is moving one way or the other, uh -huh. and like in our case, our young families moved up from uh, the last census. Um, you can see it around town. I'm sure it's going to be higher. Right. Then we can we know that our investment in young people are paying right. off and, right. and different things like that. So. And then another important area is for grants and funds that come from the federal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was, sure. Yeah, that's what I was talking about before. You know, the money comes out and goes back. I mean, right. a lot of people have heard 
um, people say this is free money. This is money that came from somebody else. Okay. <laughs> no. Well, the government prints money. It doesn't work like that. So right. um, I prefer to look at it as an opportunity for when grants and different funds are mm -hmm. available. It allows us to recapture some of the money that our people have paid oh, out yeah, to help okay. support the communities. And um, so it's it's very much helpful in determining mm -hmm. that because they're going to look for a certain type, right. a population or a different certain type of attribute. It happens all the time. Right. Um, and in with that data, they can help identify those communities and then that's what they use to grade you before they right. award grants right. and things like that. So there's a lot of values to the city with the census being accurate <coughs> and counting everybody. Absolutely. Tremendous and, value. And it takes them the better part of a year to get ready to do it. So well, we're, we're moving the, towards 2020. Exactly. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. There's a lot of people in the United States and I don't, it, it'll be interesting to see, but I'm not, I'm pretty sure that we're not going down in population. We'll have ah. to see. Yeah. You, yeah. You get a, a guideline about what's actually happening mm -hmm. with your city that you wouldn't if you didn't have the census every 10 years. Right, and otherwise the city would have to pay to gather that right. information. So, The first, I think, 15 feet of the city lots are have the right of way for the city and a few other groups? It all, you know, 15 feet, it's, it's not necessarily, feet. yeah, it's sure, certainly. Um, so what people forget uh -huh. is, is that your property line doesn't extend all the way to the street. Right. <clears throat> You've got utilities and different things that are out there. Even if you don't have a sidewalk, right. you don't own all that property. Right. Now we expect you to maintain it and right. mow the grass and different things like that. So, um, and in some communities, actually, they have the city that takes care of that stuff uh -huh. for them. You know, clears the sidewalks and whatever else. So right. <clears throat> that's an area for utilities and, and different things like that. So um, if you're going to do any work in that right of way, like right. I said, we have several people that have... Um, dug up the grass, but in that area between the curb and the street, right. and they wanted to plant flowers or uh -huh. you know make gardens out of it. Right. Lots of places like that. Um, that still belongs to the city, right? Um, and it's important for them to understand that if you make improvements, um, if you're going to, uh, for example, I know a, a person put a special sidewalk out that splits and goes out to the uh -huh. street. Well, you're, once you start doing stuff like that in, in the city's right away, you have to pull a permit. Right. Um, and, and make sure that you're doing things appropriately to our right. city codes and different things because it's, it's, it's maintained for a certain reason to sure. help us with water drainage and, and access to different things and, and realizing that uh, we need to get access to different stuff. And so, you know, if you, it's great to put that in there, but if you're going to put something out there that might someday get um, torn up, you can't be super yeah. concerned yeah, about that. that. I think, as I was looking through that, that you're responsible for whatever you put out there, yep. but it may not stay be depending on what the city is doing. If it depends. We try to, if you put something out there and it's a nice and it's an asset, we yeah. try to replace oh, that. Oh, sure, um, sure. And different areas, um, trees are a big one. Oh, right. The people right. planted in that right away, or that space between mm -hmm. the curb and the street. And uh, several years ago, probably two, I think, um, we made a decision as city council: we're not going to allow people to put new trees between that curb and the si and uh -huh. the and the sidewalk. Problem is, it wrecks the sidewalk ah. and it wrecks the street when those roots come in. Both of those. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. So um, we did a major sidewalk overhaul not too long ago. Um, fixed a lot of those of different mm -hmm. types of problems. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's city property that we use as the right of way, which right. simply means it's the right of everybody right. in the community. To get well, I want to thank you so much You're for welcome. Thank sharing you. your time and your experience with our audience out there. Thank you. We'll ask you to be sure to tune in next week for part two on Osseo's issues. And we're glad that you're with us and look forward to seeing you again. Bye.